you've been um, you know voted as one of the top 5 most promising entrepreneurs in india by business world um did you think um you would um, really make this kind of an impact when you started out initially we had no idea that uh, this is a kind of impact that we are set on to uh, uh, as we were passing through journey every day uh, we we understand as to what are the what are the what is the impact that we could make and uh, of course you know everyone's been selling um, there are very many sites that are selling um, uh, plane tickets and train tickets and so on but nobody really thought of bus uh, bus tickets i mean uh, and uh, we all know that the money is really at the bottom of the pyramid and uh, you you've been amazing to cash in on that opportunity yeah absolutely i think that is uh, one because i was a customer myself and the second reason why it's not done is it's very fragmented there are hundreds and thousands of bus operators across the country running these buses and the perception was that these bus operators were like rowdies and gundas who were running these buses very unorganized unstructured right uh, uh, th that's why usually people didn't get into it. in fact when i was leaving my job to get into this uh, one of the people who had the biggest concern was my manager he was saying why are you you are like by education i was a state ranker in andhra then i was a distinction from pilani and etc and all you said you so good you're doing well in your uh, you've done well in academics you're doing good uh, at uh, texas instruments why are you leaving this job to get into the rowdies and gundas and etc and all that but actually when i got in there i realized that they're not like that it's it's just that uh, the hassle that they go through uh, the tensions that they go through not everybody can keep up to that and it is their personal money which is getting into it it is their uh, the profit and loss i mean it's like any other small and medium businessman right i mean they are they usually the, the outlook is like that but inside them they are they they are organized and structured and all and also when i went and met them many of their the businesses who are uh, passed on from the parents to the children and the children were very educated they were engineers and etc and all and they could relate to what we were saying and that's how we could make the move into it and uh, yeah as the journey passed through we were surprised at the uh, at the traction that we are gaining we were surprised at uh, 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 how consumers are adopting to the new thing and also very handy is that the whole internet revolution is happening in the country uh, uh, at this juncture which has also helped us Uh, now i'm like you are a graduate from the harvard business school so when you actually graduated from harvard what did you think you were going to do i'm sure you didn't think that you were going to you were going to uh, start a chai business i'm sure you you were thinking of you know maybe joining a very big uh, international corporation or did you really think entrepreneurship when you when you got your degree from harvard i, I actually i went to harvard with the idea of uh, sort of learning about entrepreneurship. I was very clear I was working at Microsoft before I went to Harvard I worked with Microsoft for 4 years and I had a great run a very good run and I was one of the youngest employees there so when I went to Harvard I was very clear that uh, I mean I had the whole fascination with the corporate world the, the glitz and glamour I was done with so when I was there at Harvard I was generally trying to understand several things uh discover myself in all honesty and also understand various things and I realized that the most interesting opportunities are the ones which are not so obvious so right so uh i was very clear that i just wanted to figure out something which is a big opportunity and uh, something which is scalable so but when i graduated i did not start business straight off uh the idea had not struck though you know uh, if i recollect we did discuss this uh you know in one of those long night sessions with some of my student uh, friends but it had not struck uh, the thought that had struck me was that uh, i needed to work under someone who could guide me better so i ended up working for an old boss of mine who was uh, uh, responsible for uh, microsoft across asia pacific and i became his business manager did that for a few months and then i came back to india to actually be the country manager of a software company which uh, the company at that point of time had acquired i was very obviously you can see i come from a it was a very soft landing um, i come from a very conservative background my father is a police officer retired police officer and uh, i'm the only chai wala <laughs> there and certainly uh, maybe one of the first businessmen in my family so i i really wanted to slide down carefully i was very cautious uh, but i saw that great opportunity to come here and build a business for a company which had been recently acquired 
uh, but at the same time, I was very clear that um, I don't need to be in a corporate world. I just don't need to. I mean, lifestyle and all those kind of things had no meaning for me at that point of time. So when I revisited the chai idea, it was just no-brainer. In all honesty, I resigned. We started the company in April, uh, March uh, 2010. I resigned in February. So a month before I resigned and I had put in my papers, I sort of moonlighted with the idea. I set up a quick store. I hired a manager from Cafe Coffee Day. I paid him 30, 40% 30, 30, more and said that, you know, just build up this chai shop and just run it. I was still skeptical. I just wanted to see, you know, you know is this just a whim? And uh, first of all, he was so ashamed to work in a chai shop. I found that very odd, you know. Uh, he was like, I, sir, let's shift the store from this locality to that locality because my friends are there. Which I found very odd because, you know, when I, I, I used to go to New York a lot and when I used to go there, you go to a Starbucks and you order chai latte and the person who's serving you, the barista, his or her eyes would lit up. They would think, wow, finally an international traveler who can appreciate tea and is asking for chai. And here I come back and I have guys who want to run away because they're serving chai. I found that ridiculous. And at the same time, I was so happy because I realized this is the opportunity. This is 100% the opportunity. So we set up the store um, on an area close to Koramangla, close to the passport office. And it was just a very clean, simple store. I and mean, hygiene was the number one thing. And then I just, you know, I, would, I was still working and I would come by the store and I would talk to people and people would come over and thank me. And, you know, they said, thank you. And, you know, and that was another thing when I realized when people are coming and thanking you, and when I'm convinced I need it, so I, there was, then we just set on, we said. And it's it's uh, immediate success. You yeah. know that there is a future for your business. Well, it's immediate success, no. I mean, in all honesty, the jury is still very much out on us. Uh, we don't have the network phenomena like internet where people get on. So brick and mortar is a very tough business. But uh, one thing is clear that it's an execution game. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the opportunity space. We just need to be smart and not fall into the trap of doing things which supposedly are dumb things and be on with it. But jury is very much out. I mean, no doubt about it. No, but you, you're up against Barista, you're up against Cafe Coffee Day, you're up against so many of these, um, you know, franchises that are coming in with a huge amount of private equity investment. And they have the capability of paying high rents in very uh, obvious, um, you know, um, malls and so on. So how do, we, how do you survive uh, with this kind of you know, So, you know, we are very, very clear. These guys are not our competitors. Our target segment is the working Indian. If there is a business which comes close to what we are trying to do, it's that brand Dunkin' Donuts, which is going to come to India, but it's again going to be a mall phenomena by the admission of the people who have bought the master franchisee. But if you look at the United States and if you look at Dunkin' Donuts, it's a working American brand. You know, so our tagline is India runs on chai. And we are very, very clear internally that the target segment is working Indian. So that means we'll never be on a park street. We'll never be in a mall. We'll be in areas, bus stands, right, uh, railway stations, uh, large corporate offices too, you know, hospitals. I mean, India is full of such places. And what you need there is just clean, hygienic, you know, lean Six Sigma based systems which can run, you know, like clockwork and uh, hopefully arrive at very consistent quality and just serve the customer. All these other peoples, they are, you know, I mean, don't want to berate them or anything of that sort, but it's basically a cut and paste of a model which was relevant to US at a certain point of time. People back in the U.S. are questioning whether that model is relevant to them in light of the, you know, recession and so on. So there's a bit of fine tuning happening. So we are very, very clear. We don't want to be in that space. We want to be somewhere in the middle, in the mid range, and just work on our execution as far as funds are concerned. So we are up for that battle. You know, I mean, oh, we are angel backed and uh, very soon closing a second round. We know the game. We'll fight it out. Let's see. <laughs> Great. It's good to see your enthusiasm. Uh, now back to Nitin. Nitin, um, you are considered as the most original orator and stand-up comic of present times. Now, you know, this is a very new phenomenon for Indians actually to be do doing stand-up comedies. And you're a TED favorite. I've been at many TED um, um, and, uh, conferences and I've never um, seen um, any Indian actually um, doing a stand-up comedy. 
And uh, it's really a pleasant surprise that uh, you are doing what you are, because it requires, I would always say that Indians can never laugh at themselves. It's been a very, um, you know, um, uh, widely acknowledged fact. I mean, if you take, uh, if you look at um, uh, our TV channels, and, you know, politicians can't take a joke about themselves, the public can't handle a joke. I mean, lots of people just don't understand humor in this country. So it requires a lot of uh, um, courage. And, of course, entrepreneurs are full of courage. So how did you actually, you know, what inspired you to actually stand up there? What gave you the confidence? Were you particularly um, motivated by some incident in your life? Uh, because these, this is a skill. I mean, it's not about, uh, you know, looking at um, a business plan, as I said, and doing it. This is a particular skill that you're gifted with. So, I mean, how did you arrive uh, at this to, to do this? You could have been doing something else. You're an engineer from IIT Mumbai, and you could have got every plum job in the country. But, um, you know, this is the entrepreneurial spirit in you that's um, inspired you to do this and uh, have the courage. So tell us a little bit about that. That's a very long question, actually. <clears throat> so I'll give a long answer. <laughs> Uh, first of all, the first thing about me being the most original orator, that's the original line which I wrote about myself. <laughs> it's show business, right? That's the way you sell yourself. 